The next uh, speaker will tell us about how they were able to create a platform that through low-coded uh, zero-code programming approaches can do neural classification. Uh, so technology block from Sparebank, Alexander Brocher, Brocher Gladkich and Alexander Horikov, uh, executive director on data sciences. Uh, Colleagues, the floor is yours. You can start. Hello, my name is Prokhor Gladkich. I work for Sber. Today, with Alexander Korkov, we are speaking about uh, low code and no code instruments in NLP. So, our presentation will consist of two main parts. Uh, first, I'm speaking about uh, documents processing in Sber, uh, named uh, entities and uh, uh, frameworks uh, to work with this task and low-code uh, for tackling such tasks. And then Alexander will speak about the uh, no-code platforms. Uh, processing documents in SPIR is going through two main models, uh, NLP and C, and, and C, D, and also recognition that allows us to process data from this model. Then it goes to further processing in NLP. In, on the screen, you see the main tasks uh, for NLP we are working with, and mostly we are tackling tackling classification tasks and uh, retrievement of uh, named uh, entities, uh, named entity recognition. Let's speak about this particular task. Uh, in simple words, uh, this means retrieving part of text uh, related to specific categories, dates, uh, geolocation, persons, money, and so on. If uh, we're tackling this task through open source frameworks, uh, there are some challenges. No instruments for analysis of uh, the size of data set, no pre-processing instruments uh, splitting documents into shorter parts that go into the context of the model smoothly. No post-processing, no analysis of uh, mistakes, uh, no span-based metrics support and uh, uh, interrelated entities support and two-level classification in order to retrieve a person and understand who this is, a um, man or a woman, uh, inside the model. And not many architectures for NR models. And the whole framework with uh, all um, interrelations uh, should be deployed into production, and this is a challenge. When around 15 teams uh, are working on such uh, tasks and more than 50 in, on NAR projects are in the pipeline, this means uh, too much time to launch such uh, tasks into the business. And that's why we decided to tackle, to develop uh, um, a parser thing to tackle these issues. Uh, for various data sets, it uh, reads the data and uh, bring it into one format. And also analysis of data set is being done and shown in statistics and graphics uh, and split the document, splits the document into parts, configuration of entities, filtration of entities, and of course models. A validator that uh, calculates the metrics and um, draws beautiful reports after models are trained and formatting for various types of businesses after uh, and then visualizer of the markup and predictions. And we have a box for deploying our mix and uh, two boxes under development in negative sampling and augmentation of data. But um, one box is not enough. In order to work in NAR classification, we put several boxes together and make a pipeline of them, then how they interact and what formats of data we will use. Bad idea is to make uh, for every box, uh, uh, since they are doing different job, very their own format, uh, data format. We actually created uh, the single format for all boxes. And uh, this is a tokenized text and some additional information for models that use uh, 2D token coordinates on the document page. Let's have a look at the uh, example of code and the initialization of our code pipeline and learning and the predict. Uh, so not much code if it is uh, a customized pipeline that uh, uh, that is uh, defined for the project, then uh, there would have been more code than this. Configuration of our local instrument is done through one JSON file uh, where multi-class and multi-label neural classification is supported, two-level classification of entities and some entities can be skipped and uh, they can be flattened in two-level classification. Models we are using consist of three main parts, embedder, bodies, and heads. For each of the parts, we have a set from what from which you can select and you can create various combinations of models, for instance, BERT plus CRF uh, or, um, uh, or uh, BLSTM of, and then some other elements. Our framework is uh, called AutoNER. It um, allows us to work 
work with classification of text and uh, model learning. And the ra entities uh, you do not need the learning for simple entities like ANN, INN dates uh, or other uh, other um, types of text. We have models that uh, do not call for additional training. You can take everything out of the box. And Altenary tables, another instrument that allows you to retrieve data from tables from documents. So let's have a look at how Altener impacts the implementation of um, NAR project in timing. Usually eight steps to a project. First, labeling. Uh, our instruments do not impact it. Uh, then markup analysis for data set. Uh, then exploration data analysis instruments uh, ready-made and a visualizer. That's why this uh, stage is quite fast. Pre-processing also our instruments are help and we as developers of the model, we just need to use uh, a ready-made model because they're all ready to go to the pipeline. And uh, then experiments is also speeded up through tensor board uh, validator and experiments comparison we have uh, errors analysis in place so they are inputted and you can have a look uh, at the various uh, errors that are the most frequent post-processing is also a fast uh, thing because it's custom for projects and model service we also use uh, model or index on an x and uh, from our experience uh, through our low code instruments auto air comparing the analogs in their projects, we speed up around two times. And let's speak about one real case, uh, a NER project um, tackling medical project, a medical paper comes to us and we need to understand what uh, type of this document is and the date of examination, recommendations and impression. So metrics, if we use classic ANR, metrics are not very high. The entities are very long, several lines, and this is this looks like extractive self-implementation. But we use the summer runner approach. Uh, um, so we look at uh, every, every line and uh, we go to the second level here. And we make it in a different way. Since uh, uh, the documents are not very long, one or two pages, we put them in to long former and then we make the pooling inside all sentences and basing on vectors of these sentences we make um, uh, the classification so our model can see more context and the metrics are higher than in the original model and I can say that uh, such architecture in our low code instrument uh, was lacking because this is a non-standard model non-standard project but we through 10 lines of code we added it to the architecture and this shows the flexibility of our low code instrument and we also use um, near CLF classification few short and the model per training active learning together with um, Artem Shelmanov's team AI lab augmentation distillation and cancer answering uh, in the future we plan to get away from labeling large amount of data and um, learn how to f build few short uh, robust few short models this is our dream team we are enhancing it if you want to work with us send us a CV and then the floor goes to Alexander he's going to speak about no code studio Colleagues, hello again. Now, just a second. Prohor has just told you about the framework Autoner. This is a low code framework, but we moved uh, deeper than that and prepared another solution. This is a solution for our business, um, no code platform ADD. It is devoted to NL tackling NLP tasks in uh, documents uh, uh, processing, and through web interface, you can have uh, you can have your own model to NER tackle NER tasks and classification tasks. The platform is uh, focusing on business users without uh, significant expertise in data sciences. And now I would like to show you how through this uh, model, uh, through this approach, you can create a ready-made model. And now let's start. I'll show you the interface of the product. Let's call it. Let's take a name for our product, project and uh, NER classification and a couple of entities uh, uh, to add uh, we are going to work with. Okay, and another one. Very good. So, we've created a new project, so let's go to the interface. This is the main interface of the product, and in it we see all the stages of creating model for machine learning, downloading data, labeling, training and deploy. Let's start a test dataset.
data set is here in total we have 15 documents they're all here we can go into a document and have a look at what it is and what it contains or if there is no labeling then we make a task for labeling and markup let's do it AIJ demo markup and a couple of markers are here and uh, let's select all documents and send them for marking up. Uh, now we have a task for marking up and I'm going into interface of the markup uh, instrument. I look at the first task and I see the first document uh, marked up. So this is going seamlessly, no need to switch between uh, bookmarks. Uh, now let's have a look at uh, various um, entities, applicant and the sums, and then the next document you can mark up the whole sample we, that is available now. In this instrument you can mark up large complicated HTML documents and simple text. I am not going to show you the stage of the markup, I will show you the pre-markup we prepared before, not to spend much time now. So we, are, we have 15 documents marked up. When it is ready, the logical next stage is to create a model of machine learning. Let's create a model. As you see, everything is done super simple, no need to code. Just select the data set which is marked up and create a task. Next, uh, Auto ML Magic uh, uh, Auto NER framework. It uh, makes everything automatically on its own, selects the model and parameters uh, uh, and uh, some other elements important for this data set. And no knowledge on how it works uh, is needed. Uh, uh, not much data, model has already trained itself, so let's have a look at the metrics we have for the data set. This was the first epoch, we have very good metrics uh, zero, and the last epoch, epoch 15, we have uh, Weighted average, um, the matrix is 0 .0, 0 0.93, uh, less than 1. So let's have a look at uh, the charts where model makes mistakes. How can we do that? We can have a look at uh, uh, validation and trainee token distribution. There are some differences and we can have a look at, at the confusion metrics and look at in what tokens model make mistakes, mostly applicant data and also judge. And in general, the quality of model is quite good, not many mistakes, and let's deploy the model. Let's create a task for deploy. I select a ready-made model and I click send and NLP model will go to a server now and will automatically create an endpoint you can address through API. This is the endpoint. And apart from this endpoint, in the system we have a card where all motors are available for workspace of the user are shown and our model card is also here now. In this card through the interface you can download a document let's uh, download a document and visually assess uh, the quality of the model and uh, uh, decide whether we will continue working with it or not as we see the model defines all the entities properly and we can click at uh, what entities every step is related to and look at the JSON this instrument allows us to have end-to-end -end, uh, create a model of machine learning without participation uh, of uh, human beings is ADPL Studio. This is aiming to speed up time to market in NLP tasks for data scientists. And apart from that, we have a very important assistant in it. Uh, Prohor has mentioned Active Learning Assistant. He is aiming at uh, speeding up the markup. Active Learning is an approach uh, that prioritizes uh, the elements for assessors in order to for the data that impacts the model the most to be marked up the first the data that doesn't impact or impact less will be marked up the last and from our internal benchmarks it means speeding up two times two times less data should be marked up and our platform we are developing 
by a small but a very powerful strong team and we're enhancing the team now and hire new people. That's why if uh, you're interested in our products and if you like what we do and you want to take part in development or you want to have more details on the demo or you have questions, please uh, uh, please send an email to me or Prohor. We will be happy to help you and uh, we'll be happy to get your feedback. Thank you very much. That's it for me. Thank you very much. Prohor Alexandra. We have two questions for you, colleagues. I would like to articulate them now. First question is probably quite expected question. Since we are seeing a trend for low code and zero code, does it make any sense to to go and learn development, programming? Probably a student asks a question. Let me answer. You know, it makes sense to learn programming. Not only programming, there are data sciences and various types of development. Uh, there is analysis of data. All these things are important, even when we are having low-code, no-code instruments available, because there are always tasks uh, of higher complexity, and low-code instruments might not uh, cover them. And any low-code instrument has its limitations. And development of such instruments also requires uh, specialists to be involved. And that's why learning programming, data analysis, I think this is always a relevant, uh, relevant thing. Prokhor, another question. Could you please clarify from your perspective, from your experience, what is the specificity of low code or no code in NLP? Any peculiarities, specificities comparing against similar platforms, probably computer vision or other areas? Anything specific about NLP? What do you think, comparing against the no code or low code? Well, now I think if we compare it against uh, computer vision, uh, the architecture is getting, is, uh, well, it looks uh, similar, and I don't think uh, that there are a lot of differences between the two. But if we compare it against uh, the table data analysis of big data, and table data area. Yes, there are significant differences between because deeper models uh, require you do not need big data for them. That's why the differences in approaches in implementation, yes, there are some comparing against table data. Thank you very much, colleagues, for your presentation. Thank you very much for this Q&A session.